Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, August 31st. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. First, I'd like to apologize for any thunder you might hear in the background of this particular video. I can't really help that in this case. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, in the Atlantic today, we're watching uh, perhaps the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. There is some hints and some model forecasts that an area of low pressure could develop here over the next few days. Uh, whatever it does form here will be very slow to develop, and there's really not a really strong signal for uh, development here. The, the National Hurricane Center only gives us a low chance over the next several days, and uh, I would easily concur with that, as there's nothing really organized at the moment, but we'll keep an eye on it just in case. Nothing is going to happen quickly there at any rate. We'll keep an eye on it over the next few days. Uh, the big story in the tropics is uh, going to be Hurricane Irma here on the edge of your screen, way out in the eastern Atlantic, and this is going to be a long track storm that we will be keeping an eye on for quite some time, well over a week's worth of uh, watching this system is what we're in for here in the near future. This is the close-up infrared shot from CIRA, and we'll see here that uh, an eye has developed today, and this was somewhat of a surprise this morning. The storm really intensified a bit quicker than expected last night and this morning, and uh, we have ourselves a hurricane that has actually become a major hurricane. Uh, very quickly here, the National Hurricane Center estimating that Irma now has winds of 115 miles per hour. I personally have doubts that it's actually this strong, but the point is that it has intensified a lot since yesterday, and the system uh, may be young, but is already powerful over here west of the Cabo Verde Islands. Uh, we can see the convection is uh, taking on a little bit of a more ragged appearance this evening, and the eye is starting to disappear a little bit. One of the reasons this may be is because the eye is quite small, and these structures, especially when it's the first time the system is developing an eye, can be quite fragile. And so it wouldn't be surprising to see that this eye get replaced by a larger eye over the next couple of days. An eye wall replacement cycle is what that's called, and uh, that could easily cause some brief weakening and re-strengthening periods as the system uh, reaches maturity, and we'll likely see it grow in size as it moves off toward the west here over the next few days. It's also moving over relatively cool water. We talked about this in yesterday's video. The waters here are only about 27 degrees Celsius, maybe even a little cooler than 27 over the next little while as the system moves toward the west-northwest over the next two days or so. And this water is a little cool for hurricanes. That doesn't mean it can't maintain its Category 3 strength, but it does mean that it may not intensify a whole bunch over the next couple of days. And if it does intensify, it will likely only be a smidge over the, the next short term. After that, the water starts getting warmer as you get farther west into the Atlantic. Once you get over here, the water is much warmer, and the uh, hurricane could intensify further from its current state. Uh, but for the moment, we'll likely see a fairly steady Hurricane Irma for the, for the next little while. The big question, of course, is uh, where is the storm going? And we're going to start looking at some 500 millibar maps, get nice and used to these because we're going to show a lot of them today. This is the 500 millibar height in black contours, approximating steering for the hurricane. We'll be showing the troughs and ridges that cause flow near the storm. And then the color field is the anomaly from climatology, but you can basically ignore that. We're focusing mainly on the black contours here, and the colors help to highlight. This is the GFS out to tomorrow evening, Friday evening. There's Irma. And uh, the models agree on a main feature of the short-term track, and that is this big ridge to its north oriented northeast to southwest, such that the flow starts pushing the hurricane back toward the west-southwest after uh, tomorrow and Saturday, and it begins to lose latitude and come back toward the south. And uh, this is cause for concern potentially for the Leeward Islands as, as, as the system approaches from this angle, it starts to look like it could get close to the Leeward Islands in the longer term. And this is something that the GFS and European agree quite well on. If we look at the GFS out to Monday morning, this is where the hurricane is. Here's the ridge to its north, and uh, you can see that the hurricane is due east of uh, the Leeward Islands here. If you look at the European, it is a little bit faster, so it's a little bit farther to the west here, you can see, than the GFS, but they essentially agree on how far south uh, Irma will get over the next few days, and so there's, there's decent agreement that the southward turn will occur. Where the models diverge at this point is that the GFS goes ahead and takes this hurricane and starts moving it back toward the north over the coming days. So if we go out now to Wednesday morning, you can see that the hurricane has moved back toward the west-northwest and is now passing well northeast of the Leeward Islands here with no threat 
to those islands, but the European disagrees and has a storm much farther southwest, and that indeed would be an impact to the Leeward Islands. So this is the current disagreement. The first forecast hurdle with this storm is will it come far enough south to impact the Leewards? Keep in mind that this is a day six forecast here, so there's still a lot of uncertainty naturally with almost any forecast, and getting the difference between here and here correct six days in advance is no easy task. Uh, the key features here are this upper low to the northwest of Irma as it comes through the, the main development region and this ridge to its north that is directing it toward the west. This upper low has weakened a little bit over on the GFS runs over the last little while, and this ridge has grown a little bit stronger to the north of Irma in some of the recent GFS runs, while the European has been rather consistent in its representation of both. Uh, this can sometimes indicate that the European is a little more reliable in this circumstance because it has been more consistent, and if any model has been correcting to something different, it has been the GFS giving ground as opposed to the European model giving ground. What that means is that if the European is a little more reliable, we might expect a greater potential for a threat to the Leeward Islands than the GFS forecast here would suggest. So this is something that uh, we should be starting to watch if you're in the Leeward Islands and the Lesser Antilles in general. You know, start keeping an eye on this. If you haven't been paying attention, start paying attention now. Just make sure you have a hurricane plan ready to go in case it's needed. It's not clear yet whether or not it will be. Uh, we still have a lot of time to watch this storm as it approaches. We're talking about Wednesday. This is this is a Thursday evening video we're talking about next Wednesday when this could be near the island. So lots of time here, uh, but perhaps start keeping an eye on it. And that's what the, the current NHC forecast shows also, is this west-southwest turn and then getting uncomfortably close to the Leeward Islands by Tuesday, which is the end of the five-day forecast. And again, this is something that uh, should be monitored if you're in this region of the Eastern Caribbean, just in case the storm does actually come right through the islands instead of passing toward the north. Both are possible. It's hard to know which is going to occur. Uh, better safe than sorry here. Now, of course, uh, our friends farther west are also wondering, is there any threat to this part of the world here? Uh, further west in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, the United States, Bermuda. This is getting way out into the forecast, folks, and there's a lot of uncertainty here. I will very briefly show you. Um, let's see. Here's the correct image. I'll briefly show you here. This is the Wednesday forecast from the GFS again. There's the storm, and again, the GFS takes this north of the Caribbean. This is the general pattern we're looking at. We have this big ridge to its north still directing the hurricane west-northwest. We have this big trough that comes into the eastern United States, and uh, we have pretty decent confidence that a trough of some sort will be here, but some sort could mean a lot of different stuff. Uh, this kind of a forecast five days or more in advance gets very hairy very fast. A lot of stuff can happen here. This portion of the trough can cut off into an upper low and back away while this trough moves to the northeast, which some model runs show, or the whole trough can amplify and take the, the hurricane right out to sea, or the whole thing could lift out and the ridge could build in and force the hurricane west toward the land masses, and a bunch of other possibilities. I want to show you an animation. This is the GFS showing all forecasts from the last two days valid on Friday afternoon, not this Friday tomorrow, but next Friday, eight days from now. You can see that the hurricane on these runs is generally placed between Bermuda and the Bahamas, and it doesn't move very much. The model has the hurricane in roughly the same spot, but focus on all the traffic to the north. Look at all the differences. These are all different model runs showing completely different things to the north of the hurricane by next Friday. And you'll note that the system is nowhere near anything like the United States yet. And this is day eight. This is such a long-range forecast. The point of this is that there's a lot of chaotic variability in the atmosphere. You can't predict it all perfectly, certainly not at eight days out, 10 days out, 12 days out, which is what we're talking about here if you're asking if this could threaten the United States. And anyone who tells you that there's any certainty as to whether this is going to threaten Florida, the southeastern United States, the Bahamas, Cuba, there is no certainty. There isn't. So we're going to keep an eye on this, but this pattern is rather complicated. We don't know what's going to happen with this trough over the East United States yet. We don't know where the hurricane's going to be. If the hurricane is in the leewards like the European shows, it's a greater threat farther west. It's easier to hit land if the hurricane is farther south. If the hurricane is up here where the GFS has it, it makes it easier to recurve out to sea. Of course, Bermuda's there too. But uh, it, it's hard to know. So we're going to keep an eye on this for the next four or five days, see where it is in here. If the European is right, then there's a greater risk to the Leeward Antilles and the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas down the road. If the GFS is right and it's up here, 
then there's a, a better chance that it doesn't bother anybody. Uh, but we have a long time to watch this yet. Again, this is the official forecast, bringing it uncomfortably close to the Lesser Antilles is a major hurricane, likely to be quite strong and powerful. There's really nothing impeding its intensification except for the cold water in the short term, and even that goes away in a few days. So this is likely to remain a powerful hurricane for most of its life, and we're going to be watching this for over a week. So uh, if you're in the Leeward Islands, go ahead and uh, start watching the system and preparing just in case. Make sure you're ready to go in case it comes your way. But again, lots of time to watch this one, folks. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.